QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Purchase Order Form PO Form. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process, maximizing the home page, view drop down, open windows list, making sure that it is open, going to the reports drop down, then the company and financial, opening up the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, range change tab. 010124 tab 123124 tab January to December 2024 I'm going to customize the report so we can change the fonts and numbers increase in the font size to 12 okay yes please okay then I'm going to open up the balance sheet reports drop down we're going to go to the company and financial once again look at that balance sheet standard the other major financial statement report 123124 the date we're going to use i'm going to customize those numbers fonts and numbers again change the font and number bring it on up to 12 okay yes please okay there we have it let's go back over to the home page so now we're focusing in on the vendor center remember that ultimately the vendor center means we're purchasing something goods or services from somebody else cash ultimately going out at the end of the day we recalled that the easiest way that we have paying for bills for example would be if they were just paying for them as they uh, come and possibly we're paying them electronically for example possibly relying on bank feeds in order to make those payments that's the easiest way the second thing easiest way is we can actually write physical checks as the bills come in and then reconcile those checks to the bank account using bank feeds and or bank reconciliation process or we can have the accrual process us entering the bills that we've talked about in the last couple presentations which increases the accounts payable and then we pay the bill with basically a check form a form that decreases the checking account but a special check form which is decreasing accounts payable directly now we also this this is the normal accrual process for for companies that don't have like inventory that is in play if you have inventory then you have the added level that we have to think about up top and that's going to be this uh, column or this row up top now note that if you're purchasing inventory, there are a couple different ways that you can do inventory. For example, you might have a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system. In a periodic inventory system, you might be basically tracking the inventory possibly outside of QuickBooks, doing a count of the info inventory, possibly nightly, possibly weekly or something like that, and updating the inventory in essence manually on a periodic basis or you might use a perpetual inventory system. When we're using the inventory functions within QuickBooks, we're usually talking about a perpetual inventory system, meaning we're gonna be increasing the inventory as we make the purchases of inventory. That would be usually when we enter the bill, for example, or we can enter a check and increase the inventory when we enter the check. And then when we sell the inventory with typically an invoice or sales receipt, we're going to be decreasing the inventory with at that point in time instead of periodically using like a physical count. So that's what we mean, a perpetual inventory system when we're tracking inventory within QuickBooks. That adds another level of kind of complication uh, within QuickBooks because we have other reports that we're going to be using in order to track basically the inventory. If we go to the reports drop down up top, for example, and go to the inventory, we've got the inventory valuation report opening that up now we've got let's change the date to 12 31 24 
And so now we've got our list of inventory. We'll talk about how to set up inventory. It's a whole kind of special area in and of itself, how to set up the items in a future presentation. But just note that you have this added kind of level of having to track the inventory units and uh, uh, in addition to just what's on basically the account on the balance sheet. So this 30,000, uh, 68338 if i go to the balance sheet and we go to the inventory there's the 30,68338 30, we saw a similar kind of thing with the accounts payable when the accounts payable is increasing we also want to have a sub ledger breaking that accounts payable out by who we owe the money to by vendor similar thing with the inventory if we have the inventory total up top that's not everything we want to know where is it there it is we also want to know broken that information out by what kind of inventory we have and the cost of the inventory units and so on, giving us basically a sub ledger, giving us more detail based on the inventory information. Okay, so given that, I'm going to go back to the homepage. Also note that if you have a service company, you might not see this top line up top. The reason it's here is because we set the company up as a um, company that has inventory. And so if we go to the edit drop down up top and go to the preferences, uh, you can find the inventory options here. So if I go to items and inventory and the company preferences, then you see we have inventory and purchase orders are active and so on. If that were not checked off, then you may not see this basically this top line. That's something that we're gonna set up when we do the setup process and we'll talk more about these preferences and that's why we'll talk more about them in the second half of the course, we'll go through all those basic preferences. In this case, like which would be the case if you went to a company and started doing bookkeeping for a company already set up, the options would already be set up. And if you needed to change them, you could go up top here. I'm gonna close this back out. So now if we assume that we're tracking inventory within the QuickBooks system, then we're gonna go through the purchase order. Now the purchase order is a form just like the bill form and the pay bill form and so on where we do the data input but it's also a little bit different you'll note that every time we do a financial transaction there's going to be an impact in at least two accounts on the major financial statements balance sheet and income statement when we enter a bill for example we saw that accounts payable goes up the other side goes to like an expense account when we pay the bill accounts payable goes down we saw that the the checking account goes down the purchase order form is one exception to that rule. It looks like a financial form, but there's actually no impact on the financial statements themselves. The reason for that is because when we enter the purchase order, we're really just making a request, which is different than what usually happens for us individually. So note individually, if I was to purchase, say something from an online store like amazon.com, for example, I pay for it at the point in time that I order it, even though I have not yet received the inventory because I paid for it at that point in time, there is a financial transaction that happens at that point in time. If however, I'm purchasing something, let's say I'm getting something shipped from a manufacturer in China and I'm buying in bulk, I might have more leverage in that situation and be able to say, look, I would like to order, let's say like a hundred cups or something like that but I'm not gonna pay for those 100 cups until I receive them. I want to receive them and then count them and then I will, I'll pay for them. So that would only happen generally if you, if you had more leverage right in the situation and possibly are buying more in bulk. So in that case, when I make the request for the 100 cups with something like a purchase order, I, I have not actually paid for them yet and I don't actually physically have them yet Therefore, no financial transaction has taken place at that point in time. And so I, I still want to track the fact that I made a request, but there's nothing happening to the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement. So that would only happen in, in situations where you have inventory and you're requesting the inventory before you're paying for the inventory. So if I go into a purchase order, then if we take a look at one, let's go back to a prior purchase order that has been done. So I'm going to close up the carrot on the left hand side. We've got the information on uh, the right related to it. So we've got the open balance. So open balance POs to be received one. I'm going to close this activity on the left. And the general information for the purchase order is that you would be entering a vendor. This of course is who we're going to be purchasing stuff from purchasing typically inventory from if you've got class, this is a class. I won't dive into classes now. It's kind of a special 
NFT area that we'll talk about later because this is a, a job cost system that they're using. Uh, we've got the drop ship to information. We've got the template that's going to be used a kind of, uh, of, of form purchase order that we're have that we're using. We've got the date. This is going to be the date of the purchase order generally populated automatically. Got the PO number, the vendor, we've got the address and the ship to address, uh, which of course is going to be important as well. Then we have the item. This is an inventory item that we are purchasing and we have to set up the items in order to in order to enter the purchase order. So we could add a new inventory item and this is where things get a little bit uh, tricky and we'll talk more about them when we get into the second half of the course as we set up the items. But note that you, when you have the purchase order and you're dealing with inventory and you're tracking inventory into the system, you've got to have two costs that are going to be or two prices for the inventory. One, what we're purchasing the inventory for, which is going to be on this side of things, the purchase order, the bill, the check that we're going to pay the bill from, how much we're paying for the inventory. And then if you're buying and simply marking up the inventory and selling it, we're also going to have to have the sales price, the amount we're charging for the inventory, that being applied when we make an invoice or a sales receipt. So we have to set up an item to kind of do that. We also need to track the fact that this inventory is on hand when we not when we make the purchase order, but when we have the bill, when we receive the inventory. And so we have to be able to label the inventory that way. And that's where these items come into play. So we'll talk more about them in the future. We got the quantity that we're purchasing, the rate, and then we could list a customer here. And the customer is not a required field for the purchase order because you might say, well, the why do I need a customer? Because I'm dealing with someone we're buying stuff from. If I'm buying inventory and I'm just going to put it in a store and then sell it, I don't know who I'm going to sell it to, therefore wouldn't have a customer. But if I have a situation where a customer specifically asked for something, then I might assign the customer on the purchase order, not because the, the vendor needs it, but because I'm going to use the purchase order to help me track the fact that I'm buying this particular piece of inventory for a particular customer. Once I receive it, I'm going to turn around and sell it to that customer by creating an invoice and sales receipt that's kind of linked through to the purchase order in that case because I bought it custom for them. We've got the amount here and then the uh, received uh, 20. Okay, so let's close this out. Now this gets a little bit tricky because again, you got to say, well, okay, well, what's going to happen if I open up the carrot here? What happens to the balance sheet and uh, the income statement? No transaction happens. There's no increase to the inventory because it's just a request for inventory. So then the question is, well, how am I going to track the fact that I have these open inventories? What do I have? What do I expect to be happening in the future? I'm hoping that if I ordered, you know, hundred cups from a company in China that I'm going to receive them uh, at some point in time in the future. And when I receive them, then they're going to be coming with a bill. So you're imagining purchase order requesting 100 cups of, or something. When we receive them, a box of 100 cups or something like that, we'll then have the bill we are imagining. And then we will enter the bill at that point in time. So we can count the cups, then we can compare the physical count to the amount that we put on the purchase order. And then we can enter the bill because at this point in time, we physically have the inventory in our possession. It is ours. Therefore, a financial transaction has been taken place because they have com they completed the process. Then we're going to increase accounts payable. This would be similar to this bill down here that we entered before and the other side go into an item, which is going to be inventory. These two will be linked. We'll see this in a future presentation, meaning uh, this, this bill will be populated from the information for, for the purchase order. So we'll talk about that next time. If we're trying to figure out which purchase orders are still open, oftentimes you would go to the vendor center, which you could do here, or you can go to the vendor center drop down up top vendor center. And then we could go to the vendors themselves, for example, and we could look for a, a particular vendor and we might look at the purchase orders. If, we, if there are in, we could try to sort by the purchase orders if there were any outstanding. One way we can do it, or we can go to the transactions tab and we can say, I want to search all of the transactions that are purchase orders. So I can go up to the purchase orders and then we can sort by all the purchase orders that are, are there. 
all purchase orders or just simply the open purchase orders, the ones that, that we have not yet received. And then I can go into detail and follow up on this. I could say, hey, where's this stuff? I could try to call the company at that point in time and say, you know, this purchase order is outstanding. What do you have on your end? And so on. So I can hit the drop down. If I go to all purchase orders, we can go in drilling into the form. And I picked a different one here with the Thomas Kitchen and Bath because it has the received in full item down below, which of course would indicate that we made a request for inventory listed below from the vendor, Thomas Kitchen and Bath with the purchase order. And then later we had then received that inventory and possibly entered it with a bill, the bill kind of linking over to the purchase order to show that it has been received in full that link between like a bill and a purchase order and those indications are quite useful within the bookkeeping side of QuickBooks. And note that if you have a financial accounting background, like you'll see things in terms of debits and credits and financial transactions used to create the end result, the balance sheet and income statement, you might kind of overlook some of the added value that is there when you're looking at these connections between forms like purchase orders and bills, which are quite useful when you're trying to track down what is happening on a vendor by vendor basis, for example, on the bookkeeping side of things. If you go to the right then on this little carrot, you can see here that we have the summary data on the right hand side. And then we've got the uh, POs to be received are at zero. If you go to the opening balance, it's gonna go to that vendor, basically a report for the Thomas Kitchen and Bath. And you've got the bill here. So I'm gonna close this back out. I'm gonna uh, close this back out. And so remember that uh, when you're entering the, the purchase order, you could go basically to the homepage, the purchase order up top doesn't make an actual financial transaction. It's only gonna be there to basically request inventory, would only be there if you're in a type of business that has inventory and one in which you could basically make a request of inventory before uh, and not and, and not pay for it until basically you receive it. Once we receive it, we'll talk about next time entering in essence, just simply a bill, just like we entered down here, but one which is gonna be paying off inventory and therefore has the added burden, the added task of tracking uh, the inventory once we receive it in a perpetual inventory system.